1 Peter chapter 6, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, and 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 16. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, and 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 16, please. Amen. Chapter 4, verse 12 to 16. Amen. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. My Father, we are grateful to you this morning. We yield our lives to you. We pray that you will speak to us, speak into our lives. We pray that the word of God will come with all of his grace and glory. Lord, we pray, O oh God, every resistance to the preaching of God's word, we bind them in the name of Jesus. We take victory in the house. To Christ be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Today's message is titled, The Fired Up Fire. All right. I think we started last week and we will continue with what we were sharing, the fired up fire. Do you pay attention as you drive? Do you read the bumper stickers of the cars that is before you? Have you seen that bumper sticker that says, honk if you are a Christian? See that? Somebody honked, and the driver rolled his window down and asked, what's wrong with you? What do you think was wrong? They forgot that they had put a sticker there saying, honk if you are a Christian. Well, have you seen another sticker? It goes like this. When life hands you a lemon, make lemonade. As Christians, when we live in this world, you and I are not immune from challenges, hurdles, and trials that comes our way. In fact, Christian life is not a cakewalk. Don't let anyone con you into believing that once you have received Christ into your life, then life is set and it's a smooth sailing. The truth of the matter is, Jesus said to his disciples, in this world you have tribulations, you have trouble, but be of good cheer, for I, I have overcome the world. Apostle Paul, after he was stoned, went back to Lystra and told the disciples, like this, you and I have to suffer, go through much hardships and trouble to enter into the kingdom of God. So as a Christian, you and I should be aware of the fact challenges awaits us. There will be trials in our lives that you and I will go through. Praise God. Apostle Peter is saying, don't you be surprised when trials come to you, don't think and don't act as if a strange 
something is happening. In other words, he was saying, what? Expect trials in your life. Praise God. Expect trials in your life. That's what Peter is saying. Don't be surprised when trials come knocking at your door. You should not be surprised. The Bible does not, does not give us a sweet talk, but the Bible helps us to face the realities of life. The Bible allows us to see life from a real life perspective. Even as the Bible reveals to us that there are challenges before us, the Bible also reveals to us that you and I can be victorious through Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Peter is saying that, listen, there is various kinds of trials that can come our way. Praise God. Some trials simply come because we are human beings. Sickness can come. Huh? Disappointments can come. Tragedies can happen in people's life. At times, trials come because we are Christians. No? There are Christians who are being persecuted. There are Christians who are being mocked. Christians who go through mockery every day. People put them down. Christians who are criticized. Christians who are marginalized. Christians who are ostracized only because of their faith in Christ Jesus. When I stand here and gaze at the church, I can see faces who are seated here who have paid a big price because they stepped out in faith. Most of us who are born in Christian home, we don't even know what it is like to go through trials and the heat of life because we took a stand for Jesus. I see brothers and sisters who are sitting here who were, who were mocked by their families, who were put down by their families, who were persecuted by their families only because they confessed Jesus to be the Lord of their lives. Most of us have no clue what it is the price that they have paid to be seated in the house of God this morning to worship God. What I want to tell you even if you don't have a clue about it, you and I will go through trials in our lives. Praise God. Amen. There are special season when God, what is he going to do? When God knows we need to go through trials in our lives. Some trials are custom cut to discipline us and to make us and to mold us. This is how the psalmist puts it. Psalm 119, 67 and verse 71 goes like this. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. 71, it is good for me that I was afflicted that I might learn your statutes. Praise God. At other times, trials prepare us and develop us spiritually to grow stronger and to grow mature as a Christian. Trials have a purpose. And this is how Peter puts it. Peter goes on to explain that at times God will send trials in our life in order to test us and to purify our faith. How many of us have faith? Yes. This is a faith journey. We start by receiving Christ as our Savior. Saving faith, but then God wants us to continue to activate our faith. And he wants our faith muscles to get stronger as each day passes. And at times, trials come in our lives to prove whether our faith is genuine or counterfeit. Will 
our faith stand the test of time? Will our faith stand the trials that we are going through in our lives? And this is how Peter puts it. He uses the phrase that so that our faith will be proved genuine. Right. A proven faith. A proven faith. What does that mean? In its original language, this is how it goes. It means that to test something in order to prove that it will not fail. Praise God. You and I will go through trials in our lives to test, to prove that our faith will not fail. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, faith should not fail. Amen. Let me illustrate the point. Pacific Union Railway was constructing a line through a canyon in the west. And as they connected from one cliff to the other cliff, once the rail line was put, once the elaborate bridge was constructed, they decided to test the bridge. And the builder, he hitched up a train with the double amount of the normal payload. Added cars, extra cars, cars to the train, put extra load on the train, and drove the train right, right into the center of the bridge and left it right there for a whole day. One of the workers looked at the brook by the builder and asked this question, are you trying to break this bridge? The builder said, no, I am not trying to break the bridge, but I'm trying to prove that the bridge will not break. Praise God. When you and I go through the trials in our lives, it is to prove that our faith in Jesus Christ is genuine. It's authentic. It's real. It's not a force. It's not a fake. It's not just an emotional, emotional euphoria, but rather the faith in Jesus is authentic and real. Praise God. And so... You and I will go through, praise God, trials in our lives. This is what God expects from you and me. That every trial should turn into a triumph. That every test in life would, should bring forth a testimony which will bring glory to Jesus. My friend, you and I who have received Jesus as our Savior. We have to use every opportunity, every event, every episode of our life to bring glory to his holy name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, quite often trials will help us. Trials teach us what we are. They dig up the soil and let us see what we are made of. Praise God. Hallelujah. From time to time, you and I will get an opportunity to know what we are, who we are, how strong we are, how weak we are, how we need to fortify our lives, how we need to become overcomers in our lives. The text that we read talks about trials and fiery trials. There are people who go through trials in their lives, and there are people who go through fiery trials in their lives. There are trials that you and I know about, and there are trials that people are not aware about. There are trials that are published. There are trials which are publicized. And there are trials which are shrouded. And no one knows when a person is going through the intense heat of trials in their lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to tell you folks, don't compare your trial to someone else's trial. 
don't do that because you don't know what he or she is going through in their lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. This morning, let me ask you, are you going through hot trials in your life? As you are going through this period, a season of trial, what is going through your mind? Do you feel abandoned? Do you feel left out? Do you feel deserted? Or do you feel the presence of God actively in your life? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Last week we talked about two things. We talked about the time of trial. We said, no one knows when trials will come. Trials come when it is unexpected, when it is least expected. Praise God. When you are at probably at the strongest points of our life, when you are probably celebrating victory in your lives. Yes, trials can come. When things are all going fine and dandy in our lives. The second thing that we said was, how is our faith reflected in moments of trials? Is our, tri is our faith strong in Jesus or is our faith weak in Jesus? Those are the two steps that we looked into. We want to look at the third point, peace in trial. And last week we said that when we talk about the fiery trial, there are various examples in the Bible. There are characters or men and women of God who are gone through the fiery furnace experience in their lives. And when you talk about the fiery trial, how about talking about those three boys who actually, literally went through their fiery trial was actually going through a fiery furnace. Praise God. When they least expected, the trial came into their lives. But in their trial, they expressed and exhibited and exemplified their faith, which was active, which was lively, which was vibrant. And they used the opportunity to show the people around them that their faith in their God was live and active. Praise God. Amen. The peace in trial. When we go through the hottest moments of our lives, it is natural to get disturbed. It is natural to go haywire. It's natural to become restless. It's natural to become anxious. It's natural to go to, to waver in faith. But a person who has Jesus as their Savior in their life can experience peace in every season of our lives. The peace that God gives us is not controlled by our external circumstances, but rather the peace that Jesus gives us is regardless of what we are going through in any seasons of our lives. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they did not waver, praise God. They did not go wild. They did not go run around. They did not, they did not hit the panic button. They did not decide to eject out of the situation, but rather they stood, they stayed firm because their faith in their God was consistent, praise God. You and I, we live in the New Testament era where you and I have an edge over the Old Testament saints. We have the peace of God in our lives. Praise God. The Bible says regardless of what you are going through in your life, my friend, if you're going through any kind of trial in your life, the Bible says bring everything to God in Praise God. Instead of fretting, talk 
to God about your trial. Talk to him what you are going through. And the Bible says, as Paul puts it, to the Philippians, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Praise God. When you're going through that, that heat, the intense heat of trial in your life, the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Mind you, when Paul is spelling this, he had guards around him. When Peter was in the prison, there were squadron of guards around him, but the Bible says Peter was doing what? Sobbing and crying? Peter was what? Fast asleep. Praise God. Because Peter and Paul realized that it was not the Roman gods that was watching over them. They had the peace of God guarding their hearts and their minds. How is it that you find among the children of God, people are going through hell and high water and still are composed in life? It's because it's not the circumstances that are governing their lives, but the peace of God is standing as a God. Praise God. Who is standing as a God to your heart and to your mind? Heart talks about our feelings. Mind talks about our thinking. Praise God. When you have wrong thoughts, your feelings will start fretting. Praise God. When you have anxious thoughts, your feelings will start acting up. Therefore, the Bible encourages us to think what? Think what God tells us to think. Paul puts it like this. And finally, brothers, whatsoever is, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is admirable, whatsoever is praiseworthy, think about such things. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? Correct your thinking. Praise God. Allow the peace of God, stand God in your mind and your heart. Praise God. You will experience rest in the time of trials in your life. Praise God. What is it that keeps a believer steady in trial? It is the promises of God. There are so many promises that the Lord has given. Isaiah puts it like this. Isaiah 43, verse 2 and 3. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mind you, the promise does not say, if you pass through the waters. It does not say, if you pass through the rivers. It does not say, if you walk through the fire. But rather it says, when you pass through the waters. When you pass through the rivers. When you walk through the fire. Praise God. That means it's bound to happen. But God has given his promise. And you can bank on the promises of God. Praise God. Experience peace in your moments of trial in your life. Praise God. Fellowship in trial. Praise God. Fellowship in trial. The Bible says these three Jewish boys, they took their stand and the king was outraged. And what did they do? Huh? The Bible says he jacked up the heat how many times? Seven times. Intensified the power of the fire. Seven times. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we see the Bible says the man who put them into the fire is gazing into the fire. And he says, hey, wait. What's going on? 
what's going on? We put three and there is a fourth one. Praise God. In moments of trials, in moments of fiery trials of your life, you and I can experience the fellowship, not only the promise of God, but the presence of God. The presence of God is a reality. God, it is true that God is an omnipresent God. His presence is everywhere. But let me tell you, when you go to the hot, hottest moments of the battle, when you go through trials in your life, when it seems that your bottom's going to fall apart, when it seems that the world around you is going to fall apart, when it seems that the world around you is going to shatter, everything that you build is going to come down, let me tell you, it is at that moment you experience the presence of God in a way that you have never, ever experienced before. Talk to the men and women of God who have gone through hell and high waters in their life. And they will say, we experience the presence of God in a tangible way, in a real way that we have never, ever experienced before. Praise God. Hallelujah. Job went through the fiery trial experience in his life. And he came out saying, I only heard of you. Now I have seen you face to face. Praise God. Stephen who was being stoned as he went through the fiery trial of his life. As he was being stoned. The Bible says he looked up to heaven. Praise God. He saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And even as that was happening, a dual visualization was taking place. Stephen looked up to heaven and he saw Jesus. And the people who were gazing at him saw the glory of God. Saw the radiance on his face because he was reflecting the glory of Jesus upon his life. Folks, I have seen people. Who are going through trials in their lives. Their face radiating with the glory of God. Praise God. And I ain't telling you it was no face facial makeup that we are talking about. But a very unique radiance that goes. Praise God. That is experienced because they were experiencing the presence of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. John, who was banished and who was exiled in the Isle of Patmos, nobody around him. Praise God. He experienced the fellowship of the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ, coming and speaking to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. My friend. When do people see God and experience God in a new dimension that they have never experienced before? Not when they are cruising, but when they are cooking, when they are in the fire of the fiery furnace. You don't experience him, praise God, when you are on the royal Caribbean, but when you are in the royal dungeon. Praise God. The Nebuchadnezzars of this world are not impressed when they see a Christian winning the Powerball. But they are impressed and they are mesmerized and they are astonished when they see a believer going through a fireball and remaining intact in their lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. They realize that humanly it is impossible to go through what you have gone through. Yet you are here this morning because God has sustained you. You have experienced the fellowship of God. You have experienced the peace of God. You have experienced the manifestation of his presence in your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, that's when the world realizes that there is Someone in you, someone for you, and someone is working through you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. There is glory 
in trial. Let's glory. Let's glory. Pain. Praise God. It's a reality, folks. You know, the Bible doesn't say when you're going through trials in your life, you become so indifferent. You become so insensitive. You become so nonchalant that nothing affects you. No. Praise God. What we are saying is even when everything is, uh, is impacting your life and affecting you, you are still floating because you are carried by the grace of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, in reality, when you go through trials, there is pain, there is heaviness, there is pressure that you encounter in your lives. Praise God. Peter puts it like this. He says, when you're distressed by different kinds of trials, praise God. Distressed. Paul says, we are being pressured and pressed from every end, from every side. But still, we make it because why? We experience the fellowship. We experience the presence. And we have the promise of God and the peace of God. That's guarding our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. The glory through trial. Praise God. I want to present to you, God will choose to, praise God, reveal his glory today, tomorrow, or in the eternal future. That's his choice. He's a sovereign God who will make the call as to how he wants to glorify his names. That is glory through, that is glory through trial. Praise God. Amen. Imagine, picture these three boys in the fight. When two forces come against each other, the higher power, the stronger power, overrides the weaker power. Nebuchadnezzar gave orders saying, jack up the heat seven times. The flames were so intense that the Bible says those fellows, those soldiers who carried these three boys and threw them into the fire because of the intensity of the heat, they fell down and they were done. With three, these three boys, they landed in the fire. When Nebuchadnezzar was shocked, how in the world did these guys survive? There is a reason. When he jacked up the heat, praise God, a higher power, a stronger power, the consuming fire. God, who is known as the consuming fire, entered into the Babylonian fire and neutralized the power of the fire that the fire became powerless to destroy what belonged to God. Do you know why people survive through the fiery trials in their lives? It is because the presence of God is real as they go through the fire. Praise God. The fire of Babylon could only consume what belonged to Babylon. It could not touch what belonged to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. When others could not make when what, when what you have gone through, when people who are around you could not go through what you have gone through. When people have gone, people around you have gone through lesser trials in their lives and did not make it. I want to tell you this morning you're still around because he came into your fiery furnace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Look how Peter puts it. He says that it will turn into praise, honor, glory, and honor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, when you take a stand for Jesus, when you let your faith be proven as genuine and authentic, one day when you stand before him, he will witness about you. He will testify about you to his father saying, look at my son. Look at my daughter. There is Thomas. There is Philip. There is Joe. There is Marcy. There is Joycey. They stood and they witnessed to him about me even when they go went through the hardest moments of their lives. Even when they were persecuted for their faith. They stood their ground. And when Jesus, praise God, testifies about your stand for him. Praise God. Oh, when multitude of saints are all around you. Praise God. His name will be praised. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory and honor will go to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are so many people who suffer through various trials in their lives. Some who are ridiculed and mocked and persecuted because of their faith. Some who have endured illness with joy. Some who have gone through various kind of pain, pain of separation, pain of, of different kinds of problems that they face in their lives. Through all these things, those who never gave up, they will be recognized and they will be honored by the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. When Jesus finally appears, we will find out what our trials have accomplished. Things that seems to be unfair and useless will be seen as channels that ushered great trophies of grace for you and for me. Praise God. In conclusion, let me read what Peter says. This is how Peter puts it. Praise God. Peter says, in chapter 1, verse 7, praise God. In all these you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds. Praise God. For how long are you going to go through this trial? How long? Church, how long? These have come so that the proven gen verse 6, verse 6, praise God, for a little while, for a little while, for a short period of time. Praise God. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, trial's only going to last a little time. It's only for a short time. Are you going through pain? Are you going through sickness? Are you nursing the pain of separation? Have you been deserted? Have you been abandoned? Have you been double-crossed? Praise God. It's only for a little while. It's only for a short time period of time. Praise God. How long is a short period of time? How long is a little while? Well, the short period of time, the little while is different for each and every one of us. For some, it's only going to be everything will end today. For some, the little while will end probably next week. For some, next month. For some, next year. For some, in another two years. But when Peter puts it, he looks at eternity. And he says, in the light of eternity, it's only a short period of time. Don't give up hope. Don't fret. 
Don't throw in the towel. Don't walk away from him. Don't abandon faith. Don't give up faith. Because it's only for a short period of time. Praise God. Trials will only last for a short period of time. Little while. Alpa sametik. Praise God. Thodi deer mein sab kuch khatam hoga. Praise God. Thoda samay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Alpa neeratik. Alpa neeratik. Little while. My friend, this morning the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and telling you whatever you are going through is only for a little while. It's for a short period of time. But would you allow that to prove that your faith is genuine. Your faith is authentic. Your faith is more precious than gold that perishes. That you will come out of this trial pure. Purer than all eyes close. Praise God. Hallelujah. Would you let trial blow your life? Don't let trials blow your life. But let trial, praise God, lift you up. Praise God. Let trial lift you up. Let trial put you on a higher platform. Praise God. Let trial prove that your faith is authentic and genuine. When all eyes are closed, for a moment, I'm going to open this altar. Regardless of what you're going through this morning, the Bible tells you that it's Whatever you're going through is only for a short period of time. It might end sooner than what you think. But in the light of eternity, it's really short. But who would say, Lord, when I'm going through this trial, I don't want to abandon my faith. I want to come out stronger sturdier, stable, steadfast, consistent, a proven faith where heaven will acknowledge. Regardless of the nature of your trial, the intensity of your trial, you say, I want prayer. Here I come. The altar is open. Come. We want to pray with you and for you. As we sing, come. If the Spirit of God has spoken into your life and you want to, res you want to respond. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody in the house? Come. No compulsion, no coercion. And my spirit revived in your story. Thank you, Jesus. And I look to the cross. Thank you, Father. My failure is lost in the light. Thank you, Jesus. Of your glorious grace. Amen.